Yes, well, welcome to another live stream from your good old pal's wizard food. Here we are, doing something. We're going to do it well. That's right. We're going to do it so well, we're going to do it hard. Yeah. Do it right. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Okay, I was working on making the... Um, the oh, the ghost sword have an auto-aim. Today's topic is going to be power-ups. We're going to work on some speed boosts, health boosts, damage boosts, that kind of stuff. Pick them up. Consume them when you want, right? So you can pick up a quantity of healing items and then use them when you want. Okay, so I got to at least check in what I was doing here before. I remember I was... Oh, yeah, I made the sword, so it doesn't launch until... It doesn't launch the ghost sword until you release the button. And this is making the auto-aim. I wonder if this would fix this. Let's check this out real quick. Let's check this out real quick, shall we? Let's give it a quick run. We're just gonna let this thing run and it'll run out. It'll run in. It'll run right right through the kitchen. Out the side window. This, look at that weird bug. Like somehow when I start, it always does this little shaky thing. Uh, something's so weird, the frame rate gets all slow when I'm streaming or recording videos. I shall figure this out later. Let's, uh, we're just gonna be slow today. How about that? You know what? It might be the ticks, max ticks per second. Boom, oh, there we go. We got the ghost sword. Woo! Yay! So if I hold the button and then release, it should target the nearest foe. That guy's invisible because that is a bug. Yeah, I got him. Sweet. Why didn't it target him? Uh, it's not working. Oh, okay, that must be the, the heading problem. Okay, so this does need to be something like that. Maybe just this. Oh, let's give this a quick shot here. Tick. No, not tick. Main Mac. Got CPP. Oh, that has got to be part of it. The max tick duration is the 60th. This would be like 0.2. So the max tick duration is basically is whenever a frame goes by that lasts longer than what the ideal ticks per second is supposed to be. Right? So if you have uh, the ideal um, Frame time. It's the duration between frames, right? So the number of milliseconds it takes to draw and compute a frame is usually about 17 milliseconds when you're going for 60 frames a second. But if for some reason your animation tick or something like that takes up a bit too much time, suddenly you have a 30 millisecond frame on your hands. That's twice as many milliseconds, almost. And then, um, and then your game runs differently, right? You got to be able to handle that. So what this max tick duration is, is basically just setting a clamp on the maximum that a frame might take. So if you're suddenly you have a f super long um, background process running that totally kills your game for a second, your game doesn't freak out, right? Okay, so but I think that should that should solve our issue there. Let's see if this works. Um, oh, what the heck? Did you see that? Did anybody else see that? Just me? I didn't press any buttons like that. Worrisome. I do say it's worrisome. Hey, it did work and, it, and also the screen didn't shake up all weird anymore. Okay, glad um, that is perhaps sort of found. Okay, there we go. We got the ghost sword. Uh, we're going up here. We should be close enough. Auto aim. Oh, hey, it did. It did auto aim, but it didn't change the heading for the player at all. Okay, much better to have them both change. Okay, let's just check that in for now. Yeah. So that we can get on with today's point. The point of today. The purpose of this moment. This experiential moment. Um, 
make the ghost sword have an auto aim. I may end up leaving this in for the game. May end up taking it out. May end up make it. Probably will make it, end up making it an option, right? In your in your input settings, you can have like auto aim or something like that. Most some people will not like the auto aim. They'll want to turn it off. Most people probably just won't even notice that it's there, and they'll leave it on. Okay, so speed boost item, damage boost item, those kinds of items. Let's first put them in there. Clear up Vim here. Okay, so that's in systems where we're placing all the entities in the world. It's a function called create overworld entity. And um, we want to put these on the other, uh, not these. It's a 90 degree. X1, Y1. Okay, these are. I'm trying to think of which um, which one of these is the one that I'm thinking of. It's where okay, it's using the it's right in the center of the Y. So O Y would be like close to zero. Those are D-mids, those are 45 degree lines. Oh, here, here. Math between OX, negative two, two. Yeah, I think this is it right here. Okay, let's go ahead and comment this out real quick. See if these are the ones. Why don't I have a helpful comment on this one? That's what I'm wondering. I guess the helpful comment is items with 90 degree pathways, but I thought this was more of a pathway than the actual item okay so these are over here I'm thinking of these items where you start heading towards the yep yeah yeah oh but no right here this little place is what we're talking about so we disabled the pathway to get across to this thing but this little diamond shape right here is what we're trying to target. And apparently we haven't got it yet. And, is it, oh, is it indeed this one right here? Oh, I was thinking that it wasn't. But indeed, it, it think it is. What are the, also oh, the other ones are the 45 degree pathways for items. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, hey. I think I forgot to, to tweet before starting this live stream. Yeah, oh, yep, yep, that was it. That was it right there. Oh, okay, so all this stuff is what we're looking for. Boom, found it. Hot damn. I did forget to tweet. I should always be tweeting more. I feel like I don't tweet enough. Who does? Who tweets enough around here, huh? Raise your hand if you tweet enough. What the? Weird stuff happens on my keyboard when I'm live streaming. And Shazam. There we go. Great. Great. Grand. Goodly. Splendorous. Wonderful. Alright. So we want to put an item right here. Shazam. Well, we want to use something like this. This is the code that places the other items around here. We'll do something like that where we switch and integer based on a random number and then we assign a file name based on that <clears throat> and then create that file name let's say those southeast one then is item oh item speed did we create all these items hold on 
think I created placeholder data for all this. Item damage, good. Item cactus, yes. Item speed, uh-huh. I'm thinking there should be something like... Oh yeah, okay, I'm thinking of... I'm thinking the fourth, I want to have these items in fours because fours two, fours and eights are really uh, kind of integral to this video game here. You have a team of eight, well not a team, you have eight players and sort of the, the, uh, the, the battlegrounds are separated into quadrants, fours, so there's fours and eights a lot. Let's copy um, item speed to, I'm thinking like there's some kind of like time item. Maybe it's the opposite of speed. Like maybe you create a bubble where everyone around you is slow, but you're still fast or something like that. Some manipulation of time, I'm thinking, but that doesn't yet, doesn't slow down the actual game's clock. Doesn't actually slow down everyone. Maybe it just slows down everyone else but you in the current um, uh, region, the nearby region. Let's, yeah, we got item time now. Let's make up a C tag so we can quickly jump to that file in Vim. And we got item speed, item a cactus, item a damage, and item a time. Okay, so now we're creating them. Something was up with this before. It's almost like I had two light beams and two markers for everything. Is this code exactly right? If oh, uh, so this is home, home y one equals zero or x one equals zero, that may be an issue. Let's see. If we have more than one item. Like last time I did this, I think I did this uh, for these one for these item areas here, and there were two items. So let's make sure let's make sure we only have one item. One item indeed. Alright. Oh yeah, see, look at that. What's up with that? Why are there two items here? Whoa. What happened there? Oh, yeah. The camera, when it rotates, we got to get rid of the other players right now. They're bugging me. We'll put them back in in a second, of course. This one is to get rid of everybody else but myself. Let's go back here. Okay, two items. One thing I just noticed there was when I rotated the camera, the camera tried to s totally catch up. Not supposed to do that. So we, when we set the rotation of the camera, I don't know. We can't set camera rotation. There it is. Um, we also need to set the camera's position. Wait, what? Oh, I know what to do. Set new camera position. So, yeah. So no uh, blending occurs. Right? Uh, so we're going to go camera pause dot clear. And what that'll do is when we call tick camera pause, it will know that it can just set the camera pause instead of trying to blend to it nicely and smoothly over time with a nice sine wave function. Doesn't need to do that, just set right away because we don't have no camera pause at all. Take the camera pause, we need an entity and get and my get my get current player I eed. Eed. It's actually a word. I didn't know it was actually a word. I always called these eeds because it's an entity ID, but Eid is actually means a uh, festival, I think. Users of undeclared identified tick camera files, what's going on here? Why do say? What is this nonsense? I 
Uh, oh. Guess we gotta put this up here before this function, or else make it render. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just make it render system. Look, we're using a namespace, so we can just extend it. I love namespaces. Render system. Render system to the rescue. News at 11. Great. Render system. This is just being pedantic here, adding that. Ah, the other two camera pause. This one not being pedantic. That one was necessary. Ah, glory be. Segmentation fault. What the what the Means we have to use Xcode. No, we don't have to use Xcode. Let's try this without Xcode, eh? Let's see if it catches a seg fault. Is it, uh, 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 Just don't. We don't need a breakpoint there. There you go. All right. Whatever. We got a breakpoint anyways. Run! Oh, man. I really need to make my LLDB colored. That would really help. I tried doing this LLDB init thing. Didn't work. Didn't work. It was supposedly supposed to give me colored LLDB output. Oh, there it is. Any get component. What's the stack trace? Um, let's try the command trace. No? Help. Bar step. Thread. Yeah, show me the... Show me the thread, man. Show me the stack trace. Oh, there it is, BT. Show the current threads call stack. Why is it BT? This definitely needs to be part of my my list, but I don't want to edit that right now. Yes. Oh, what? What happened? What the hell happened there? Oh. God. Kill the debugger all of a sudden. Are we still debugging? Um. No? Okay. Let's try that in Xcode, I guess. He says with the air of defeat in his voice. I might just have to recompile all. What did I. What could possibly have seg faulted here? Oh, I'm creating items. Maybe it's the new items that were. No, we created a new items and ran just a second ago, and it worked fine. What could possibly be seg faulting? Well, this is the curiosity. This is the mystery of code. Sid id zero zero. What? We're trying to create an entity with id zero. Who would do that? Oh, because the player hasn't been created yet. Oh, well now, that's not too hard to fix. I see what's going on here. I see what all the hubbub is about. What's all the fuss? This, right here. We need the current player. 
and none of this is really using the current player yet, so we'll just go, uh, a ref player equals and get blah 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 blah. I'm a lazy programmer, trying to take the least steps I can. Player, there. Now, if, if player. Oops. Oops. <laughs> what the? Okay. Player. Now I understand why it's seg faulted. Who wouldn't seg fault with the zero entity? Are we are we actually streaming? Is this is this happening? Am I talking out loud? Seg fault again. I thought I created an, an operator bool for ints. One thing that would really save me some time, I'm thinking, while coding would be typing accurately. I really do a lot of backspacing. But it's, it's so hard to type accurately. Okay, let's do this the simple way, huh? We'll comment out this code. See if it still seg faults. I think this wouldn't be that. Ugh. We already re refreshed all the models, moved all the entities. There, it works fine. We do this. Hey, let's do this. Let's do this. How does this sound? We'll set a breakpoint here. <laughs> Pretty sure I didn't set a break there. I swear this does not happen when I'm doing my normal everyday work. This only happens during live streams. It's weirdness. Here we go. There it said at the right point. Okay. The first time it calls this set camera rotation, it's basically just setting up the render system. There's no entities created yet. At that point, we shouldn't be triggering this code. What? Oh, it just tries to even just getting at zero? Oh, 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 okay. Something's definitely wrong with my code here. Well, I'm still curious about this though. We get no, we're fine. We got a minimum number of drop frames. We are actually live streaming. This really is happening. See this int zero here is supposed to be a safe thing. You're supposed to be able to return int zero to other functions so that they can detect it and be like, hey, um, this int get didn't work. But somehow this is crashing. So this is the first time it's trying to create zero ant the first time. It's getting the position component for zero. I have component. Oh, the components have not been created yet. Wait, how early on in the system is this? Maybe this is just too early. Maybe the entities haven't been created. Where, okay. Where is entity a lock called? Entity a lock. It's called from entity food. Oh, it's called here an entity. Oh. Okay, no entities have been created at all yet at this point when we were calling this set camera rotation. So, 
I see what's going on. It's not really a bug. It's more just that the entities haven't been located yet. We're just calling this player id. Eed. Sorry, let's start pronouncing it eed. As in the word eed. It's not really, it's, a, it's an id, an entity id, but today we'll call it an e eed. As if it were a real word. Player eed. I'm so confident that this will not crash, I'm running it straight from the command line without even going to the Xcode. Don't even care if it does crash this time. Force through the crash. Seg faults be damned. Yes, there we go. Success. Okay, now we just got to be curious about why. Oh, wait, no. Does this work? Yeah, no. Oh, what happened to that? Oh, <laughs> this is a camera. Camera does not like it's. Uh. Hold on. Take camera pause. Why are you not setting the right position for the camera? View projecting. We've already gotten. We've changed. We've changed up all the. The um. The render offset. The camera extent. We've reset the projection. Everything should be good to go for us to now change the camera position with this nice function. Ah, okay. We've we've veered from the point of today's stream, trying to catch this little bug, but I haven't cut by the tail quite yet. We'll just leave it for later. Let's get to the important part here. Creating these item power-ups. Speed, the health, the damage, the time manipulation. Let's deal with the issue of having too many of these things. Why? Uh, uh. First, we'll comment out this new code and check on that marker. See there's a marker there at every one of these points? Maybe that'll give us a clue. Clues. Need them. Want them. Gotta have them. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, indeed, there is a marker here at both of these spots. Yep, yep, indeed. Okay, well, that's makes you feel a little better. So it's got to be this code right here. Wait, the distance? Oh, I see the problem. Any other astute viewer right there, right now? Any astute viewers out there in the stream, we can spot what the bug is in this code right here. It's pretty simple if you just take one little look. See what's going on here? I'll give you a second to digest that. That's right. It's Give you a little clue. It's more like right here. Yeah, that's the problem right here, and this is the problem. The problem is that. It's not right. Let's make that right. There we go. We should only have one item now. Dang, damn it. Now that, dang it. Now that, dang it. That's right. Yeah. Hey, hello, Zach Ware. What's up? Huh? 
How's it going today? How art thou? How are you at this fine moment? I like that emoticon you use there. Was that, um, that one heroic rabbit? What's his name? Yes, we only have one item. Um, we need to distinguish these item boosts. Yeah, let's create some, let's create some voxel model, some voxel models for these items. We've got speed, there we go. Let's make the speed. I know this is super cheesy, but for now, real quick, we'll just go, we'll make speed look like an S. A really accurate S, too. Let's make this really beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, I like that. That's that's nice. It's like a snake. It's kind of like Trogdor, actually. That's awesome. There, let's make it a little more like Trogdor. Yeah, look at that. Oh, Trogdor had an arm. That's, now it's not an S anymore. Okay, good enough. S is for speed, D is for damage. You made a tech demo for your project? Right on, man. Sweet. Mystery of, is it Magia or Magia? Ma Magia. That's great, man. We'll make a D for damage. Making sure to make this D look really D-like. Magia. Cool. I like your art style, too. Um, how far along is your game? Damage, speed... Um, health, cactus, oh, cactus, oh, cactus, cactus is something I can actually draw right now, ha, <laughs> yes, I love drawing, let's close Xcode in this background process, it's somehow still running, we don't need that, close this, four dungeons, two optional dungeons, sweet, and uh, how far along are you? How far? When can we play this game? Let's open up. Uh, oh, uh, open song bringer. Uh, yeah, something like this. HUD, not HUD. Yeah, HUD will work. HUD cactus. HUD cactus, or uh, I think item cactus is probably the one we want. That'll give us though. I just want to copy to the desktop. Oh wait, no, we can just open, open that, and drag this in, drag this into Magic of Voxel. No wait, item, item cactus. Sweet, nice man. Almost done with the engine. Just next to combat dialogue, fixing up the audio. Nice work, man. Oops. There we go. Just what I wanted to see. An almost green thing. Let's get this act this this color more accurate, huh? Open recent. Whoop. Whoop. This gunmetal green here. This, okay. this isn't gunmetal green. This is like, this is way more saturated than gunmetal. 
But it is 140, 160, 160, which is how we have to do here for Magicka. You can't just can't just put in a hexadecimal code. See, so you just grab this color here, and then you just go 160, 140, 140. Is that what it was? No, oh, I got it wrong. It was, was it 140, 160? Oh, 140, 160, 160. Yeah. Yeah, right, see. I just got this little bit backwards. We just got to put this uh, the right words, not the backwards, but the right words. Yeah. That's better, right? Yeah, just like that. Look how beautiful that is. It's a two-dimensional cactus. Let's make it 17 by 17 by 17, and we'll expand it. Up. So let's go to this view here. Do, 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 do. And do, 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 do. Oops. You notice my uninspired take at speed and damage? Just didn't even care, but when it came to cactuses, I got excited. That's right. Who wouldn't? I'm trying. Oh, there it is. That's the that's the key combination I was trying to hit right there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. We got like a really wide cactus here. Let's carve this out and make this cool. A quick way to carve things. Oh, I, le I learned this the other day. This is super nice here in Magica. You just turn on. Um, uh, there. Oh, there we go. Uh, erase. We want to be erasing some. Mirror X and Y. That will give us like if I start deleting some stuff here. Oh, what is? There it goes. Oh 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 oh. oh, oh. Okay, okay okay. We want to mirror X and Y, but also do the entire Z axis, and that will just chop everything nice and neat here. Not looking circular enough for me yet. That's still not still something very wrong about that. Let's do that. No, 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 no. Yes. This is a challenge. Drawing this cactus is not as easy as I thought it would be. All right, let's turn off that mirroring. This time we're gonna do the is this X. Yeah, let's get rid of a few things here. Make this a little more rounded, spherical, bulbous. Yeah, that's that's all. Uh, yeah. Do that Y axis now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was the one right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is good enough for now. That's probably not even gonna look that cactusy in the game, but good enough. We got the speed damage cactus. Let's do the time item, and we'll do a nice cheesy uh, letter again. Oh sweet man. I haven't played uh, Seiken Densetsu, but I heard it's really good. All of them. We'll copy any one of these will do. Speed, time. I might actually want to call this item time. Whatever. We're just going to keep it like that for now. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, item speed. Oh, yeah, see, I did this for these. Probably should be item speed. 
Yeah, what were the what were the flaws in SD three, huh? What did you what did you note? What is this? No. Oh. Should at least have at least have a proper name. Speed A. Global occlude. This thing could probably cast shadows. Oh, we, nah. No need to cast shadows just yet. Nah, whatever. Item speed. Category item. Yeah. Okay. Like it. Like it a lot. Item damage. During combat, when an enemy attacks, you stop for no reason. Oh, really? That's big. That's a big issue with combat. Huh. Wow. You would think by the third time a game gets its installment, it wouldn't have such issues. Speed, damage, cactus. And time. Okay. How we have those items in there doing that, what they're doing. They're there. Let's. Oh, we forgot to create the time item or time model. I'd like to see a little T on the ground for that. Oh, oh, oh. Also that. Oh, you know what? We can go ahead and just do this. Let's go ahead and uh, get move. We can also just get on this on something like that. Anything else? Good story, huh? Oh, three separate storylines, too? That's cool. Move cactus to item cactus. A0. And damage. And um, speed. And time. This will just help. Oh. Okay, that's fine. This will just help things be a little more organized. Because once a game starts growing, you start getting some content in there. Things get a little more difficult to track. It's nice to have these sort of naming systems. It's more of remembering systems, really, is what you, it should be called. Mnemonics, isn't that the word? Okay, we've got that, and that, and that, and that. And these, and let's run it. And that's a wrap, that's all. That's all I've got. Ah. Cool, man. We've got some speed there. And over here, this section. Oh, wait. No, it's over here. Yeah. Oh, somebody picked up that item already. We got to Oh, no, wait. No, there's no other players. There's no other players right now. There's the damage. There's the cactus. Yes. Oh, oh, that looks awesome. Let's rotate the camera around that. It looks so good. Is that offset? Is it floating in the air? I think it's floating in the air a little bit. Yeah. Oh! I think I realized why the camera didn't work right for that rotation. Ugh. 
gosh, that's kind of weird. I got I got to really fix that whole camera issue while we're trying to rotate. That's what, that, that, why this is happening is because um, I just added this camera smoothing, right? So you can see as I move a little bit, the camera, let's go back to normal speed. As I move a little bit, the camera takes a little second to smoothly glide into position. And in fact, if I just face a different direction, the camera slides a little bit. It's nice, the smooth movement of the camera. It's soothing, isn't it? Oh. But uh, there's an issue here when we rotate the camera, which I didn't notice when I created this code. So, got to deal with that. Tried to deal with that earlier. Got to deal with it better next time. Okay, so camera, or cactus we got, but for some reason, no item time. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got item time. There's item time. We got NM's idle item time A. Oh, 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 oh. And this also should be item time. Okay, that, that's fine. And uh, LS art models. Do we have item time? Do we? Do we? Yeah! It's right there! Should not be invisible! Invisible it should not be! Oh, there's a lot of grinding too, huh? Ah, I know what you mean. A little bit of grinding can be cool. A lot of grinding gets too grindy. Like, like, I think of Final Fantasy when I say that. The Final Fantasy games are were had a real nice. Nice level of grind, too, not too much grind. And then, all of a sudden, when it came to like Final Fantasy, uh, I forget which one, they started being too grindy. Too grindy for my liking. Oh, well that certainly has something to do with it. This is the most beautiful S I've ever seen. He is for time. Lord of time. Let's put some knobbies on there. There we go. Yeah. That's how I like it. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, uh, there it is. Why is that still a D? Oh, maybe that one was a D before. Just tenacious D. Hey, it didn't work. What the, what the? We've got a D there, the cactus is over here. We've got the S here. Oh, there's the T. Oh, it's the S that's wrong. Or, or the D. Item speed. Item damage. Item speed is an S. Item damage is a D. Oh, so. Oh, oh, oh. Well, perhaps it has something to do with quadrant. Ah, uh, this could be. Okay, let's check this. Fortunately, me that means we have to open the code. Or, no, what? You know what? Let's do this in LLDB. I know it didn't quite go so well last time I tried to run LLDB, but this time I got a feeling. So, whoops, it's kind of X code. I might just take that as a sign. Here we are, tapping our fingers, waiting for Xcode to open. Yay! 
And then we can wait for it to start the debugger. What? See, what? Oh, there. Uh, you know what? Close the Xcode. I'm not feeling it. Okay, the keystroke is option. There we go. Oh, it does not wait long enough to create that breakpoint, does it? But it worked. All right, cool. We've got a breakpoint. <laughs> Okay, go. Oh, oh, oh. So it went. It's just that when I debug in the command line, it's uh just doesn't let you know it stopped sometimes. Okay, quadrant, right? Okay, this is all I really care about. It's printing the quad oops. Okay, so this is, um, can we list like some variables like that? No, it doesn't work like that. How about this? Mm, I, uh, how about this? What? Okay. Whatever, whatever. We got the quadrant is southeast. Okay, now we're gonna go, go to the next breakpoint. Also southeast, see, that's the problem. Apparently, the OX, OY, it's not accurate because. When it goes to create this, when it creates this quadrant variable, oh, well that's easy enough. So one of these needs to be less than or equal to, or maybe they all need to be less than or equal to. No, okay. Oh, if O X is less than zero. So what I'm thinking of the, it's the case where O X is exactly zero. So if O X is exactly zero, I would I think. I think I would want it to be this, so it's southeast or northeast, but then... Oh, maybe OY needs to be less than or equal to zero, because we're going to have an OY... Wait, no, so we're... Hold on. I need to print these OXs and OYs. See, this southeast is... 0, negative 47. Let's start this over. Look at me, I'm actually debugging the next code, or in the command line. Hot diggity damn. You gotta remember that it broke right there. Let's <laughs> go off in my zone. Oh look, oh, it shows me with the variables. I know you can set watch watches, right? How do you watch variables? Let's, let's, let's try this out here. Oh, V. V shows you the variables in the current stack frame. Where is the watch, though?
display. I think it's display. So I want to display OX. I want to display OY. I want to display Q. And now. <laughs> But we haven't, we're not breaking right here, so I don't know how to... Okay, anyways, yeah, the quadrant southeast. OX is zero. OY is negative 47. Um, let's continue. All right. So this time, we're northwest. OX negative 42, OY zero. Northeast, zero 42. Northeast twice? Zero 47. What? So we did Northeast twice? Okay, I think it was northeast twice. Let's run that again, see if this time... Oh. You don't like those displays? Okay, southeast, zero, negative 47. North, we skip southwest. Negative 42, zero. This is hard to debug in the command line. It's hard for me to visualize these variables. We did northwest, northeast, we skipped southwest. And then it does northeast again, okay. Okay, so we can go ahead and, no, not quit, we want to, just escape here real quick. Oh, like this. Let's do this. Let's copy all this. Oh, hey, this does make it a little bit easier. Okay, I can just go through back through my. Oh, that's kind of nice. I can just scroll back through the output there. Okay, so southeast was. Now we can go up to here where it creates the quadrant variable and figure out why, why this has its flaw. What is wrong with that code right there? Raise your hand if you know. If anybody on the stream can shout out why, save me some time, yeah? So southeast is OX being zero, OY being negative 47. I guess that should be east, because X is zero. Y is negative. Okay. I could see that one being all right. This time OX is negative, OY is zero, meaning positive? I almost think the OYs should be less than or equal to zero and the OX should be less than zero. I think it's, that's where my instincts tell me this needs to move. Right, OX is to the left, OY is at zero, and we've got Northwest. Yeah, this is going to prefer north. This one is the one that should be southwest then. Okay, I think this needs to be like this. My instincts are screaming this. My brain is not rationally... rationalize this. My instinct, my subconscious, if you will, is guiding this ship. I'm sailing without looking. All right, let's try that again. We'll set a lovely breakpoint here. Analyze these lovely variables.
We want to watch. Hey, can we do this? No. Ah, I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> Still get to know it. Run. Right. Okay, once again, we're at zero, negative 47, and we have southeast. This time we're at negative 42, zero, and we have southwest. Yeah, that's what we wanted. This time we're at 42, zero, and we've got southeast again. Ah. Oh. Ooh, oh, okay. We want if are they both supposed to be less than or equal to? Or are they supposed to be flippy flopped depending on your X? I'm starting to realize that math perhaps is not one of my strong points. I always thought it was. But maybe not. Okay, we need to think of this. In um, the upper right quadrant, We want x to be greater than or equal to 0, but y to be less than 0. And then, right, so that would give us, that would give us northwest Okay, I I can't figure this out thinking of it trying to do it all like that. I think we need to rewrite all this. OX is greater than or equal to zero. And OY is greater than zero. We've got quadrant north west. Northeast. Otherwise, if we have OX we have OX is greater than or equal to zero. Nope, nope. 
if OX is greater than zero and OY Oh, this is hurting my brain. This is so easy. But I can't figure it out right now. I can do this. I can do this. like this then otherwise we have if OX is less than or equal to zero and OY uh, is less than zero. Oh, yeah, southwest. Okay, and this one is northwest. <sighs> Whoo! Man, that hurt my brain. Let's try that again. I don't even know if this is right. Oh, dude, I don't know. What just happened? I just refreshed my... Duh. Sorry, man, I just saw you t t typed a message and then... Uh, then that happened. Sorry, ask me again. Look, it didn't even set my breakpoint or do any of this right either. Uh, oh, here we go. If you're making a dialogue system that supports multiple languages, yeah, I did that for Songbringer. It's a good idea to make a script Filled with the dialogue lines, depending on which language it is, to make workflow more. Yes, yes. Make the dialogue and read the lines from the corner. Yes, absolutely. So you want to key. You basically want to make that script keyed in whatever kind of codes you want, right? So you have keys and values. This is key, you know, key value pairs for all of your uh, your strings. It's called a. Um, it's called a, just a string file usually. A strings file, and. Um, so based on your key, you just have different string files for each language. So you have an English string file, you have a Japanese string file, but they both have the same keys. So your code can look up the key, right? You want to look up the dialogue for when uh, your entity first meets another character. Um, and so you have a key for that, and you look it up, and your English file gives you the English script, and then the Japanese one it gives you the Japanese script. Real simple. Okay, let's say this breakpoint here. No, oh, wait. Oh. Uh, G G B breakpoint toggle. Here we are doing it the hard way. Good old LLDB command line. Display Q. Display OX. Display Y. 
run. I think I like Xcode better for debugging. I mean, this command line is a little bit faster. I'm getting more and more used to it. Once I get faster at it, I'm sure it, I'll like it more. But for now, I don't like it yet. <laughs> I feel like I'm kicking and screaming my way into this command line debugging. All right. Negative 42, zero is southwest. That's it. What happened? Why are there two wraith binders? Well, this is an oddity. What is going on here? Shall we run it again? We got the breakpoint there. Here we go. Negative 42, zero is southwest. Continue. Oh my god, what's going on here? Oh. Oh. There's gotta be a simpler way to determine which, whoa, wait, 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 wait. I think I've got this. I think I've this. Oh, yeah. Okay. In compass dir, I, I think I already have functions for this. Quadrant. It's called quadrant. I think that's the function we need. Compass dir. Shoot, I can just look up by quadrant. Yeah, right? X align, Y align, Q. Oh. See how much simpler this map is than my old. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Cons quadrant Q. Let's ditch all this stuff here. Equals quadrant O X O Y. Correct? Hopefully. Right? So if we pass in O X is negative 42. Wait, why is this mod 2? Oh, this ain't quite right neither. No, this is this is something else. This would be the function we would want. But this is actually for an older system I had where I was subdividing every... Let's make a function for this though. We need this to be... This, this is more for specifically to... Oh, oh, I get it. This is really just, this should be, this one should be renamed. This is for X2, Y2. Uh, which was part, basically a Songbringer specific. Really, this function probably shouldn't even be in here. Um, let's call this quadrant, and this is just X, Y. And let's make sure that none of the other code is relying on this older quadrant function. Add quadrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, we're all good, we're all good. Um, so now we go to compass there. 
this is the function. Oops. For x2, y2. This one. Here we go. I think that's what we need. X aligns, X is less than or equal to zero, Y aligns, Y is less than or equal to zero. So if we have, we have Y align, now this is greater. Yeah, so if y line is greater than or equal to zero, we're in the northern quadrants, which puts us at quadrants two and three. And then, if not y line, so we're in the bottom two quadrants, then q plus equals x align means it's positive, then we've got zero southeast, one southwest. Otherwise, we're in the top quadrant, then we have x align is uh, greater than or equal to zero, we have plus one, yeah. I think that should work. Let's go set up our breakpoint. Get ready for this. Gosh, this took a while to figure out the stupid quadrant. I feel like a fool. I feel embarrassed. This is the kind of stuff that slows you down programming wise slows me down programming wise, that I need to figure out how to make faster. These kinds of little delays that probably just took a 15 minutes right there just to figure out this, getting this quadrant to be accurate. It really shouldn't take that long. I'm trying to figure out ways to become a better programmer by spending less time spinning my wheels. This is quite an example of spinning one's wheels. And for that, I feel a moment of shame. We got a breakpoint. Oh, I forgot the printout variables. Oh well. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Zero. OX is zero, OY is negative 47. And we have quadrant northwest. Ah. Ah, uh, okay, first of all, I'm going to remove the mental weight. I've been trying to debug with the command line, and that's more difficult for me. So let's try this this way. Uh, auto QQ equals quadrant OXOY. We're just going to set a breakpoint there. Get Xcode open. Make it a little easier on old Nathaniel Weiss. Your pal, wizard foo. Start with that. You know what I realized about mental baggage this morning? In fact, you're carrying this weight, this mental baggage. But really, your mind can carry anything. Anything. The heaviest thing in the world could weigh nothing inside your mind. So, if you think of it that way, it's pretty hard to have any mental weight at all. Right? You don't need to fuss and fret. I don't need to fuss and fret over the debugger right now. I can just let go of that mental weight because it doesn't actually weigh anything. How enlightening is that? Okay, see, it didn't really take that long to open Xcode. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Look at this nice little display of variables. Zero, negative 47. Let's step into this function. Yeah. X is zero, Y is negative 47. Or X align and Y align. X align is true, Y align is false. Q plus equals Y align. See, this came out to be northwest last time, but we don't want northwest. So, oh, well, it starts here. This is backwards. And if we do have an X align, we have no Y align, then yeah, zero, one, and this one's one, zero. Okay, I think it was just that line there. Let's recompile that. If I could just snap my fingers and be twice as efficient of a programmer, Gosh, I'm getting a new laptop. That'll make me a little more efficient. Look how slow we're compiling right now with this live stream com streaming in the background. Not that it's anyone's fault. I don't blame you. I blame my computer for not being fast enough to stream and compile. Quadrant OX OY. This time, let's do it right. Yeah, X align, Y align, Q plus equals nothing. Sweet. And, okay, so we're in the, yeah, we're in the lower right quadrant. So we should have a Q of zero total. Beautiful. That was simply beautiful. Okay, here we go again. X is negative 42, Y is zero. This time, we should be south... No, that would be north. Oh. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I think I'm running into the same problem I had before. Oh. Okay, let go of the mental weight. Ugh. Right? This is easy. I can figure this out. Um, which gives us a false false. So this one's probably going to work out right. Let's see what this, this one turns out right. Q plus equals the Y line. Of course, it's going to be... Wait, what? The Y is zero. zeros really mess with it um x is negative 42 y is zero x line right so i want this one to be southwest but i think it's going to turn out being northwest right because we've got a y line of true I think I think I'm I think I got this vision vision of this working here. I think Y align. Let's see. Separate that there. Let's 
So Y align should kind of look like this. X align. Right, so if we're in the eastern quadrants, we have an exit line. God, this is should, this, okay. This will help here if I rename these variables. So we're going to call this one east. Ah, it's better. Okay. We're going to call this one North. Yeah, better. OK, great. We've got East. That's pretty clear. But North is going to be, if we're in the East quadrant, I guess it really doesn't matter which way we do it. Or does it? If we're in the eastern quadrant, we want y is greater than zero to offset because the x was greater than or equal to zero. Right? If we're in the western quadrant, then we've got y is greater than or equal to zero and x is less than zero. If we're in the southwest quadrant, then we've got x is less than zero y is less than zero ah okay <laughs> this is uh i think this needs to be like this actually if the east is actually dependent on the y and the y, and the north is also dependent on the x. So if y is less than is how about if y is greater than or equal to 0 then x is greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise we have x is greater than 0. And instead of calling this east, oh no. Nah, yeah, no we really do need to make that east, huh? Or do we? The north is Ugh, I just I, just, I feel like I want to do this. Make this all uniform. Would that actually work out? Let's think about this. Okay, we've got uh, um, uh, if y uh, uh, maybe I'll just debug this. Instead of trying to debug it in my mind. Okay. I think this is the only instance of calling this function, so we can make it a little easier by just setting a breakpoint here. Now, east. If y, okay, if y is greater than or equal to zero, it's not, then we've got x is greater than or equal to zero, x is greater, okay, so x is zero, that's gonna, should give us east. No, it doesn't. Okay, I think what I wanted then 
was x is, if y is greater than or equal to zero, then x is greater than zero. If x is greater than or equal to zero, y is greater than, something like that. There's got to be such an easy way to just compute the quadrant accurately, even if there are zeros in the x or y. Hopefully this is it here, but I feel like this math is too complicated. I know there's a simpler way to approach this. Some wizardly mathematician should needs to come by my stream right now. Help a programmer out. Otherwise, I'm just going to stumble my way through it. Wait. Oh, we okay. We do need the breakpoint where it was. We need this breakpoint. So we're computing the quadrant for everybody. Okay, let's continue until we have that other breakpoint. There we go. All right, we got x zero, y negative forty-seven. I want this to be east, and I want this to be south. Great. So we should come up with quadrant zero at the end. Cool. Okay. Here's the test. We come with O X O Y. X is negative forty two. That should definitely give us west. And Y is zero. Now here's a here's where I want it to be south. Okay, so east should be false. north x greater than or equal to zero y is okay okay um x is greater than or equal to zero no so y y is greater than or equal to zero No. Oh, no. Nope. Okay, this is going to give us north. We don't want this one to be north. Okay. So I think, I think what we need is this. Just have to let go of the mental weight of this taking so long to accomplish something so simple. Right? It's no big deal. Programmers do this all the time. Okay, we got it. This one should be southeast. Looking good. Now, this next one should be southwest. Nice. Which should give us a Q of one. Right on. Okay. Run it again. This time we should have northwest. X is, is nope. This one should be northeast. X forty two, Y zero. I guess X negative forty two is gonna be next. Oh oh okay yeah. So this one should be northeast. If it works out, the math works out right. East should be true. Yeah, of course it's going to be true. And then north should be true. Yeah, I think it's actually going to work out. 
Oh, glory be. Yes. Run this one more time, and this last one should be northwest. All right. East, um, okay, because x is 0. x is 0, y is 47. Yeah. It's so tricky, right? It's so tricky with these x's and y's falling on 0. But this one I want to be northwest. So east should be false. If y is greater than or equal to 0, then... and north should be true. Oh, yes! Ah! Oh. Vindication! Just like the weapon from one of my favorite heroes. Okay, cool. I think that's a wrap. Remember, like, 45 minutes ago when I started this whole quest to have the correct items? I think we're finally there. Alright, these items don't do anything yet, but we've got time here. We've got... Whoa. Okay, now we should be over here. No, over here. Aha. That one's damage. That one's the cactus. And that one's speed. Yeah! They're different. Let's confirm that one more time. What's up, Zachary? Zachary and Zachware. What's up, y'alls? Songbringer Volume 2 to you as well. I can't wait to do Songbringer 2. That is the next game I'll still be writing. I'm currently writing a game. It's multiplayer and with Songbringer combat. So Songbringer combat style with multiplayer-ness, deathmatchiness. But after that comes Songbringer Volume 2. Can't wait to do that, man. I'm letting my thoughts simmer on Songbringer 2. I would like to elevate the story a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm trying to become a better story writer a little bit so I can write Songbringer 2's story. Really dope. But it'll feature this, this this very 3D engine I'm writing right now. I shall be using this 3D engine for both of the next games I'm writing. All right, we've got. Let's make sure all these file names come out as we are expecting. This one. Item time. Item speed. Item damage. Item cactus. Oh, 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 what a relief. God, man, that's like you've been holding the piss for the last two hours and you let it go. What relief. Okay, we can get rid of this code here. Sweet Jesus in a, in a bread basket. Okay, so look, we've got all these items. We've got item speed, item damage, item time, item cactus. They're all in the proper quadrants. They're no longer doubled up like they used to be. The camera kind of works when you rotate it. Um, we just got one player in there. All right, now all we got to do is implement the items. Let's check this in so far, though. Okay, we've added the um, speed, damage, cactus, and time items. Okay, now we just got to make the items do something, right? I would like it so you can use them as a quantity. So you pick up the speed, you get like three uses of the speed item.
Huh. Okay, so I'm trying to think about how to implement item quantities. I guess that's not the most important thing to do first. Item quantities, that can come second. First things first. Second things first. Nah, first things first. We need to be able to use that item. So we've picked it up. We um, The system automatically assigns a button to it. So uh, that'll be better later. We'll have like a HUD display of what item you got equipped to each button. That'll be nice eventually. But for now, it's just a mysterious list that's you don't know about until you press the button. It's, it's great. Um, so we need to be able to use, let's use, which, which item should we do first? Let's do, let's do the health item. It's great. I love the health item. So we can eat a cactus. We're doing the eat the cactus time. Sweet. Always wanted to do this. Okay, so input system. I think everything's already hooked up so that we can go ahead and just use the item. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so here's rotate. We'll put this a little bit above there. We we'll call this one cactus. Use cactus. We're going to create functions for all four of these right away. Batching. We're using a technique, a time management technique called batching. Hooray! Cactus is healing, damage is damaging, so we'll make the damage item. We'll pair these together with their partner. Yeah, you got a partner. That's right. Yeah. Partner time. Partner up. Everybody, pick a partner on the dance floor. Damage time speed. Time. We'll hook them up to the usability functions. Damage. Oh, ability time is not an ability yet. We need that ability. Because I just thought it up just now. Cactus. Damage, speed, time. And we need to make this a word too, so all the data can be parsed correctly. Ability. Yeah. Man, damn. <laughs> All right, do that too. Probably, probably that. I feel like I needed this for some reason in some other case, so I probably should undo that there. Forget where I else I needed that, but oh well. Okay, so we've got all these functions hooked up. We can now use the cactus, use all these things. We let's um okay, so when we eat a cactus, we want to do e dot input dot set cooldown. Whoa. What's wrong? I'm pressing tab. Okay, that's weird enough for me to exit Vim. Let's try this again. Input system. Cool. Tab. Boom, it worked. Okay, so it was Vim. 
That happened to me before once. It's probably how I knew how to solve that so fast. Okay, so we've got a cooldown. You can only eat a cactus every second or so. Something like that. Okay. And when you eat one, um, you would decrease the quantity. But uh, we don't have quantities yet. So we'll just do increasing the player's health. So how much is cactus worth? How much is cactus worth you, huh? E dot input. I mean, um, oh, do I have a health delta? I do. Oh, uh, that's right. We have a whole system for setting health delta. So E dot health dot delta. We're going to make it int HP delta of, I would, I would say we would heal about 10 hit points by for now. And the pusher is the person you, I guess, self. Okay, let's give that a shot. We need some way to get hurt. Oh, I've, I think I've got that. I, I'm not sure if it'll kill me. I got a debug command that hurts myself. Because right now I have turned off all the AI players just to focus and make sure they don't steal the items. Okay, so for now we I'm pressing the my button B button or whatever and it's, nothing's happening. I think the cactus was up here in the top right or in the top middle boom we got the cactus now i'm gonna press that whoa wait first we gotta hurt ourselves yeah why is my health not going down oh it was but my bar didn't update why didn't that happen oh i wonder i wonder i wonder um, it's, oh, this is in the same file we're looking for hurt self. No, not, not there. Hurt self. Nothing. Damn. Debug command. Where is the, where are those? There it is. Kill self. Oh, it's called kill self. And this does, it does a health delta. I wonder why that didn't update the render. All right, let's give another another shot. Oh. Uh, where am I? Oh, that's a that's actually a shortcut. Okay. Uh, hurt myself. There, I, I know I have HP of 60, even though my green bar is all the way full. That's a bug. Um, picking up the cactus. Let's hurt myself once more. We're now at HP 40. We're, we're at half health. And I eat the cactus. Yeah, I'm up at 50. Sweet. 60. 70. 80. Boom. Yeah, we can heal ourselves. Woohoo! Okay, and we can just keep on healing ourselves in infinitely. Hurt myself again, heal myself a little bit because we have no more quant, we have no quantity. Good. Okay. Cool. It works despite some issues with the um, the health bar not updating itself. It kind of would really help to help to update that to fix that bug. Okay, I wonder if um, if we had other players, though, it would just work. Let's go ahead. Well, you know what? It kind of would be cool to implement all these items in their most basic fashion first. Let's go ahead and set a, just a, a cooldown for every one of these. Speed's kind of an easy one to do. Damage booster, we would need to have. Let's do speed first. Okay. So E dot move dot speed factor equals two. And um, after a while.
maybe two seconds. Uh, we would. What, what don't you like about that? It's ambiguous, huh? I'll give you ambiguous. I'll give you ambiguous, and it's right now. Put both my fists in the air and shake them at you. Is it an insult? Or is it a compliment? Yes. All right. And now we're going to um, just set the player's speed back to normal. It's probably a smarter way to do this. Relying on these scheduled functions can sometimes be a bit brittle. Um, I would probably, event if I want to do this right, I would actually put this as part of the system, some of the component. There'd be some part of some bit of data inside the move component, or maybe like an item component, like you're use currently using the speed boost, where when that timer ticked down, it would real reliably, not in a brittle way at all, turn off the speed boost. But for now, we can just do this. Uh, F.move.speed factor equals one. Okay, let's give that a shot. Uh, speed boost, was it on the left? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm moving it. Here's me moving at normal speed. And pressing the speed boost item. Oh, sweet. We're running fast. We're not running fast anymore. Speed boost. Whoa. <laughs> sweet. Nice. Normal speed. Speed boost. Woo. That's is a fun item. This is going to be really useful for like... You're getting chased by somebody, or you're chasing somebody. Either one of those situations, you love. You would love to have a speed boost. Maybe, oh, maybe instead of it being time, maybe it would be a stun. That would be nice. You just stun everyone around you for a second. Stun everybody on the screen. Time slowdowns is the same kind of thing. Let's do that. Okay, so we're going to look for all entities that are nearby. I think I got a function for that. No? Oh, well, first of all, we're going to need a vector of eads. Or eads, if you want to use the Say it that way. And then we're going to find um, entities that are uh, I think find eids role component, name component. You know what? Really all we're looking for are players there's a way easier way to do that than looping over all freaking collision entities or role component entities or any of those entities. So we can just loop over for auto eid in ent all players. All right, now if this player is close enough, let's set a const float max dist of, what's the closest distance to like halfway of the screen would be 210. Let's try 210 if. And uh, we'll square that. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Math square F. Uh, yeah. Now, the distance squared. is equal to the 
entities pause. That would be f dot position dot pause. Um, actually, we want to do e dot position dot pause minus. Doesn't matter which one's fir comes first. Hmm. Why didn't that work? I remember named distance square in P3. Could have sworn. Okay, it's if F F minus. No, no, that's is right. Yeah. If so, the position to the right. What? Isn't that right? If E is over here, F's over there. F that would give you I think it is F minus E so if Cindy's over here and Cindy's over here it's your position minus that position so that would be a ah. math why is math so impossible for my brain today I swear I have these days where I'm like Teravangian, a genius, and a fool. Genius fool, genius fool. Isn't there a distance squared in here? Length. Oh, it's length. Duh. Length, length squared. All right, now, if distance squared is less than or equal to maximum distance squared. Then this is one of the endings we can use. E is dot pushback. All we're doing here is finding all the nearby players that we can affect with this time spell. Pushback. It's time device. Okay. Actually, we don't even need a vector. We can do it all here in place. Oh, you know what? We also want them to be on a different team, too. So if f dot get team Oh, you know what? We do need to make this a vector. Cuz we might want to do this other entities too that get slowed down. Like we affect the skybots. That's a good thing to start with affecting the skybots. So if f dot get team not equal to e dot get team or is equal to e dot get team for now we're gonna make this not affect our team so continue there and the square and the eids okay this is a find nearby bows to slow this is um Slow. S slow down entities. What? 
<laughs> it's almost funny now when stuff like that happens, huh? I don't know what just happened there. Press some weird key combo. It did something I have no idea what what it did. I'm sure it's my fault though. There we go. Okay. Now we need to get the entity. Slow it down. F dot move dot speed factor. Actually, you know what? If F dot move, let's be safe about this. F dot move dot speed factor equals 0 0.5. You are slowed. And then schedule a function to restore your speed. Which, once again, this should be a little bit less of a brittle system. Uh, we're already up to entity G here. Whoa. Speed factor restored back to 1.0 after a delay. Let's put these, let's make some, um, let's make some constants here. Constant float, um, cooldown equals 1.0. Const float duration equals 2.0. Um, Const float max distance equals 210. Was, was there one other number here? And then speed factor is 0 0.5. Okay. That's a cooldown. That's the max dist. I guess we could just do this. Uh, and then we got a speed factor. Hey, I hope um I hope anybody watching this stream on YouTube or anybody watching here is enjoying the fact that you can see which keys I'm pressing. Isn't that neato? Yeah, that's new. Yeah, that's right. It's pretty sweet stuff, eh? Ah, yeah. And let's do the same thing for this one. No more magic numbers. Oops. Magic numbers. Don't like them. Don't need them. Don't want them. There we go. Okay. Let's see if this works. Huh? 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 I have a feeling it's going to work perfectly on the first try without any changes at all. So much less like working with those quadrants earlier. Oh, it's going to give me nightmares tonight. Oh, did I say that? I shouldn't say that. I don't want to give power to the nightmares. I already. I already get little enough sleep as it is. Maybe it's why I'm talking all weird now, huh? Listen to me. I'm loopy. Maybe that's why I can't do math today. Lack of sleep? I can do everything but math. All right, let's get this item. Let's, well, let's, let's see if we got other players. Yeah, there's a dude. Hey, dude. Okay, let's go get this time slowdown item. There it is. All right. So I'm here. Let's, hopefully we can find the multiple players. That would be neat. There's there's a guy. There's a guy. He's doing his thing. Hey hey guy. Boom! Hit you with the speed slowdown, and I run away all normal speed, and you you weren't. <laughs> Let's do it again. Boom! You're all slow. Yeah. It's working. That guy got me. There's a there's a there's a Rochambeau happening right here. I know you can't see when I'm pressing the button. Well, you can see when I press the button. What? Dude, dude, you're invisible. So invisible. These guys are not running away, but it would be cool if they were, if these guys were running away. These guys are just trading, just trading blows. They're Rochambeau and like a, like it's really cool. I'm pressing the button, but you can't really tell that it's slowing them down, but I think it's working. I think it is working because last time that dude, the one guy, he was slowed down trying to chase me. Here's some more Rochambeauing. 
I gotta fix this bug. There's something, I think there's something wrong with the on-screen EIDs. In fact, whoa, I could actually confirm this. These guys, oh, I guess I should only draw those entities if they're actually on screen, huh? Or maybe give some other kind of, hey, okay, here's a guy, he's walking around, I'm pressing the button, and he's slowed. Oh, wait, no, he's normal now. Yep. Uh. Uh. Yeah, it's working. Okay, that's good enough. Um, let's check these two items in. We've got speed and time working. We've got damage and... Um, oh, cactus works as well. Only thing left to do is damage. Shoot, we could do a damage boost real quick. Come on, I got this. We need a damage boost. I think we need to actually add a variable to the health component that is your damage booster. Or damage factor, you could call it damage factor because you don't want to you don't want to like do a linear like boost you want to multiply your boost like or, yeah your damage it's yeah basically if you're swinging the sword and it does four hit points of damage you don't want to boost it by you know just like two you want to double it okay i think i think that was very unclear what i just said but oh well yeah, we need a damage booster. That's the, that's the short and skinny of it. Health component. HP. Do, 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 do. Damage, original damage. Damage refresh. Infloat. Damage. Factor. It's not necessarily a boost. It could be a reduction got a damage factor now all health components have it no health components need to initialize it because we're using this great class called int float which basically just makes hopefully makes integers or floating points deterministic so I can pass integers across the network once we get to the, the real-time networking part of this game that should come in quite handy okay we got a damage factor uh, we can change it here in the input system. Let's go ahead and use the damage booster. And it's almost exactly like the speed. You just boost your own damage and restore it after a second. A kid that kick. Speed factor, but this time is the damage factor. Damage factor is two. Oh, use speed. We messed up the speed item with all that swizzling going on there a second ago. Sorry about that speed item. Okay, that's better. Damage factor 2, duration 2. 2? No, let's do the duration a little longer than that. I don't know. I'm thinking almost like 10... Let's do 8 seconds, huh? We'll do eight seconds there, and we'll make the speed items also a little bit lengthier in duration. I was, we were kind of short there at two seconds. All right, so but this is a long duration. Eight seconds is whatever. Um, health dot damage factor equals damage factor, and then when we're restoring. We've got health dot damage factor equals one. And in the health system, which is when we apply damage, I do believe. Yeah. Damage other entities. E to health of damage. I think this is the only part of the code we need to be focusing on. Focused on right here. E to health dot damage. We get the collisions, we apply the damage, do the delta. Uh, and this is where we multiply in the uh, factor. E dot health dot damage factor. Uh -huh. This is a bit lengthy here. Let's... You know what's not, what's what's horrible about this little code right there? See, being so lengthy is first of all, it's not that readable. Second of all, it's not that debuggable. Let's make this more debuggable and more readable at the same time, shall we? Constant damage. 
conf in uh, HP delta equals negative blah 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 blah, and then auto credit id equals that stuff. Ah, this is an integer. There we go. Look at this. Now this is <laughs> a little more debuggable and definitely more readable. Definitely, hopefully, more readable. Hopefully, maybe, more readable. Okay, let's just go ahead and try this out without any debugging at all. Sounds like swiftness. What's that sound? It's the sound of a swift arrow flying through the air. All right, where is this damage item? Is it over here? I think it is. I think it's right there. Yeah. Damage, boom. Get me here. Okay. Hey, my Skybot's back. What's up, guy? Hey, dude. Okay, we're, we're trading blows. Hey, why isn't my health bar changing? This is not helping me debug this situation at all. Oh, you know what? I can go to this one. There we go. I'm at HP 80. Oh, am I invincible? What the heck? Why is no one taking damage now? Oh, mate. Oh, I know what it is. We just added this one thing to the component called a health factor. And that thing should be initialized to, to one. Yeah. All right. Damage zero, damage factor one. Right, yeah. Let's see if that goes a little bit better this time. I like to increase the quality of my output. Hey, look at this. Four items done in one stream. I mean, roughly. Okay, we got the damage item, and shoot, I could just use it anytime I want, over and over and over, because there's no quantities yet, but okay. There, I attacked him once, boom, see, he did that little tiny bit of his red bar got let, let go of. I'm going to press the damage boost item, and, oh gosh, it's so hard to tell. <laughs> They're funny. Oh, first of all, let's turn off all this debug info, okay. Okay, my damage booster probably is out now. I used it again. Oh god, it's so hard to tell. Oh, I guess I need to see his health. Dude, start over. Start over. Do over. Okay. All right, I need one guy to fight. That would be nice. Hey, guy! I'm using the damage butt boost item. Boom! I think it's working. Let's make this super duper clear that it's working or not working. By setting the damage factor really high. Let's do like 10 times the damage. That might... Yeah, that's that should do... That should do... 40% of the other player's health in one sword swing. Well, this was a productive stream. I do say so myself. Where you at, man? Where you at? Where you at? Come find me. Come find me. Come get me. There you are. Damage boost item, boom! Oh, it didn't it didn't work, I guess. Huh. What? Does this require breakpoints? 
Breakpoints are not my favorite thing today. Okay, we'll set the breakpoint when we use it. Right? That's that's the really important part. Is that actually getting used? And second of all, we'll set a breakpoint in the health system whenever the damage factor is anything but one. And two breakpoints later, we should be finished with today's rough implementation of four different items, all of them unique, doing different things, but paired in a way. Alright, ready to go. Press the play button, and away we go. What could go wrong? We could get stuck debugging a quadrant issue for half an hour. That sounds fun. Okay. Hopefully we don't hit either of these breakpoints at first. I'm gonna press I'm pressing the button which I'm pretty sure will Oh wait. Oh weird uh, where is it? It's at. Oh there it is. Boom. I saw this guy up here. Hey guy! Okay, pressing the button. Alright, okay. Yeah. Health dot damage factor. E dot health. The damage factor should be starting at one. Now it is ten. Good. I'll set a breakpoint here too when it's up. Oh, go, 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 go. Oh, go, go, go. Ah, it didn't work. Okay. It set the damage factor back to one, but it did not hit the breakpoint in the health system. Oh, you see a glaring issue with this. It should be based on F. Something's based on F. What did I mess up when I changed that code around? When I refactored this code and this, I did, oh, I, no, I did it right. Negative e dot health dot damage. E dot health dot credit e. Yeah, no, those are correct. Oh. Um, it's creating a separate sword entity. So, okay, we just need to make the sword entity. We, I'm pretty sure that we, yeah, whatever. We'll keep that there for now. Um, when we call this function called use weapon, we're spawning another entity based on the parent. So parent is the player. Player spawns a sword entity, which represents just a hitbox that it does some damage. Um, and we, we just need to save some a damage factor. Let's make this a float. Float, damage, no. Yeah, auto, auto actually is what should be. Auto damage factor equals E dot health dot damage factor and we shall apply it if weapon oh we need to first capture it see all these variables I'm capturing if weapon dot health weapon dot health dot damage factor equals damage factor Guarantee that's gonna work. No problem. No more issues. No need to debug. Certainly this won't go wrong.
do 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 that got the damage item yeah yeah okay that's a normal attack press the button come back dude come back ah uh, ah uh. what the ah uh, there yeah see so did forty percent damage woo okay now uh, boom yeah okay it's working now and I'm gonna wait a second eight seconds or so goes by use my damage again and it's just normal cool press the damage button. Oh, these guys are already lo real low on health. Ah, oh, that's uh, it's not working. Hey, the one of it's the red, the red square party again. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was wor working there for a second. Cool. Okay, that's great. We have all. For those items roughly implemented I'm super excited for that and proud of the fact that I got some stuff done how fruitful is this little session huh where you can use a cactus right, let's let's do some less magic -y variables for that cactus use before we check this in shall we cool down HP Delta. There. Okay. Review. Always good to review code. Total habit. Damage factors one by default. Got damage factor applied in the health system. Damage factor applied to weapons that are spawned. Using the cactus. No magic variables. Using the damage. No magic variables. Using the speed. Magic variables. And using the time thingy. All right, loving it. Okay, checking it in. Uh, this is a imp. Uh, yeah, let's, we can use an adverb here. Roughly implement the speed, time, cactus, and damage items. There you have it. Another live stream from your good old pal, Wizard Food. Done. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for watching this stream, as usual. Thanks for watching all my videos and streams. Maybe next time I won't be as loopy, huh? How about that? Anyways, uh, until next time, farewell.